day. Good day, everybody. This is George Evans, uh, and uh, we are uh, coming to you with our 32nd uh, consecutive podcast uh, and uh, in conversation with Convergence. And uh, we meet with clients to discuss some of the top issues facing the industry on a monthly basis. I'm very pleased today. I'm, I'm joined by a really a, a great guest and uh, a longtime client, uh, Frank Andweza. And, and Frank, uh, for those of you that know Frank, and I bet you many of you do, uh, Frank is an executive vice president with Ultimus. Uh, and uh, I guess it's technically Ultimus Lever Point Private Fund Solutions. Uh, and uh, Frank, I am delighted to have you here. And I know I saw you a few weeks ago at a conference, but, uh, you know, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Thank you. And thank you, George and, and John, for always being uh a great resource for us at, at Ultimus Lever Point and prior to that at previous institutions. You guys have always been great and have known John for a long time as well. Um, you know, Ultimus Lever Point's been a, a great run for me thus far. I've been there over two and a half years. Um, Ultimus Lever Point is part of a larger organization, which you referenced, Ultimus Fund Solutions. And, you know, like much of the industry, it's been part of the, the, the Fund Administration Consolidation Story. Uh, but I'll, before I even get into all that, I'll just you know let you know, and I'm sure you know this because we've we've been we've been around the block a few times, you and I. Yeah, um, we have been. We're we've uh... been, you know I've been in this industry now. Well, I've been in banking my entire career. Um, started off at J.P. Morgan. I think you and I we didn't quite cross paths at J.P. Morgan. I believe you and John were both there. Yeah, we um, were. I was a young young puppy back in the in the '90s when this is when J.P. Morgan was still Mother Morgan and. Uh, I left when they stopped the free lunch, which I think was like uh, 1999. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. The, uh, when, and you and tell our audience too. You spent uh, you also spent uh, some real time at uh, at Bank of New York and City, right? I did. So after I left uh, J.P. Morgan, I did a you know. And back then, uh, most of my career was really around risk management and credit and banking, uh, loan underwriting. Um, and I did that really up until the point where I joined Citibank in the early 2000s. Uh, and I spent another 13 years at Citi uh, before I joined Bank of New York. And, and it was really at Citibank where I transitioned from pure, you know, capital markets, risk management and banking, underwriting type jobs into um, fun admin. And the reason I did that was, you know, um, the, the, you know Citibank had bought uh, Bysis, uh just around the uh, yeah, financial crisis. I remember crisis that well. I was, I was the chief revenue officer at Bices. There you go. That's right. That's right. Okay. So we buy Bices, I think, in 07. Uh, and I was a part of that. You know, I was, a, I was a kid working on cash flows back then, but I was a part of that, that, that investment banking process. Um, and, you know, I was ready for a change. And um, within about a year and a half of that purchase, I joined Fund Admin. Uh, writ proper and became a, a salesperson for them, leveraging the network that I had already built as a credit officer working on with hedge funds. Because back then, in 08, 09, 2010, it was really still a, pre, a you know, a, a hedge fund fund admin business, right. right? The private equity machine really just had taken off yet from a fund admin perspective. And um, so I spent a good number, I spent a, a number of years working uh in fund admin at City, prior to them getting, you know, they, they so prior to them deciding they didn't want to be in the business anymore, and that's how I met John because back in, back then he was at Apollo. And, right, that's you know, right. You know, yeah, tell yeah. do me a favor, frame frame for everybody a little bit just the profile of Ultimus, right? Uh, yeah. So you know, because you know, in this day and age, believe it or not, right, there's about six hundred and fifty fund administrators. Uh, believe it or not, when we started. Convergence eleven years ago, Frank. There were four hundred. Uh, right. So, so, and everybody thinks that the industry is consolidating. It's consolidating to the top, but but overall, there's as many players out there as always. But I, I think people will be impressed with you know kind of your profile and and presence and statistics. I'd love if you could just run that through that for everybody. That'd be terrific. Then we'll get yeah. It. I, look, I'm I, the the reason I love Ultimus is because of its origin story. And the way Ultimus is, where we are today as an organization really starts back almost 10 years now. Uh, and it really starts on the registered fund side. Uh, Ultimus is at its core, 
was at its core a registered business based out of Ohio um, in Cincinnati. And over over time, it is it has worked its way into um, being the largest independent, independently run fund administrator across all asset classes, both registered and private. Um, and um, and uh, the guy who runs it is is a colleague of mine going back to the city days, uh, Gary Tankman, who you know. Yeah. And um, and I think Gary's done a tremendous job putting putting this firm this organization together. And in the last you know handful of years, we've really gone deep in on the private side, which is when I joined. Uh, like you referenced earlier, I was at Bank of New York for three years, running U.S. Uh, sales or you know the sales organization for the for their U.S. business, and um, and really got you know recruited to come over to to Ultimus and work for Gary as part of the Ultimus uh, really. You know, going deep on the private yeah, side. Sure. Um, it's you know, in particular on private equity, which has been a growth for the last you know five six years in this industry, um, yeah. as more and more private equity firms you know transition from either self administered or even just start now, uh, right right in you know using an administrator, which is kind of kind of different, right? Which is kind of how well, the and, and as you know, you know all the growth we're really seeing in the market these days, uh, last few years in terms of funds uh, is, is closed end, right? So, right. so, so, and, you know, I, I looked at some of the numbers, right? Uh, you know, over 500 billion in a, in assets under administration, almost a thousand people, um, you know, uh, and I think maybe you could comment probably one of the, uh, some of the rocket fuel that got added to this was probably the lever point. That's right. The Loverpoint acquisition at the end of 2019 really um, put us on put us on a trajectory to where we are today, um, and uh, that really brought us into the private equity uh, fund administration space. Uh, that's when I joined, and um, you know we just in the private equity side of the business, we're over 220 billion in assets under administration. Yeah. So when you look at the numbers, whether you look at them. Uh, Ultimus Fund Solutions in, in, in aggregate, as you referenced, 500 billion. Or when you look at us as just a private equity fund administrator at over 220, um, you know we're you know with 450 clients, you know we're 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 legit. And uh, oh yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, in, in our prep, but maybe also just your view and some comments on being you know kind of with PE money at the firm too right i do i do think it gives you an advantage and and kind of a lens that you know a lot of the other administrators don't have right our private equity investors have been completely they're great partners um they're very supportive of the management team and it's recognized in the way they've invested in us and that investment has allowed us to really grow uh in ways that um you know that are impressive uh like i said you know we're at 220 and that's and we've put on and that's been like 30 percent growth um over the last few years and uh it allows us to invest in digitizing our 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 our, our data it allows us to create you know more investment in improving portals it allows us to invest in digitizing the investor service experience it allows us to invest in areas of growth like credit uh, and areas of growth like real estate, uh, all of which really lend themselves to the to the private side of uh, our asset management industry. So, you know, they've been tremendous, and we're very fortunate to have them as partners. And I think the private equity industry in general has gotten into the into this fund admin business. As you know, yeah. there's a number yeah. of examples where you see private equity money, and it's changing it's changing the industry somewhat because. Um, you know, there are two models. There's the bank model and then there's uh, sort of the independent, right? The independent has now really become private equity money. Um, yeah, it is. And the right. bank model is, you know, the, the, the big global bank model, which I sort of did at Citibank and then at Bank of New York. And uh, they both, you know, everyone has their unique challenges. But um, increasingly, you know, the real growth area, I think, is in the is, is in my space. Um, the nimbleness with which I'm, all, I can, the nimbleness with which I can run my business and grow my business is completely different than than what the bank model allows. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and you know, the, and you can see more and more 
uh, the the PE influence in the fund administration industry, right? As you know, we're often in the mix of all this M and A, right? Whether uh, we're helping or whether we're um, working with consultants or actually the PE firms giving them data on the fund administrators they're looking at, right? So as you know, we can. We can look at any fund administrator back, you know, 10 years and tell you how they built their book of business, right? And that's, you know, really helpful to a PE investor. I know, and not only that, but I always found it helpful to see how the business is, is, is eroding in certain areas. Like, you know, if you're not, if, you're, if your current book of business is leaking, um, that's a telltale sign that you need to foc- refocus or, you know, so you're, you're, your data always gave me two insights. One, where is the growth coming from? And two, where, you know, where am I vulnerable? Because uh, market- that's, what, that's a really good way, to, a good way to look at it. I agree. So let's here we are, right? November 13th. Uh, so wrapping up 23, and we've probably all been deep into 24 planning already. But could you, Frank, spend a little time on maybe what you thought some of your bigger accomplishments, right, for the 23 were? Uh, as a firm, and and uh, and then I'd like to talk, get right into then kind of your your twenty four agenda. Yeah. So look, twenty twenty three. I think um, we've had a terrific. Uh, we had a strong twenty twenty three, despite some some headwinds at, at, at the macroeconomic level, uh, with interest rates rising and sort of uncertainties around how that impacts uh, you know GDP in this country and and then how that sort of knock on that knock on effect has on private equity investment, et cetera. Despite those headwinds, we've managed to do very well. And one reason is, you know, because we are a because we address the private asset space across all asset classes, hedge, private uh, private closed end, uh, venture and real estate, <clears throat> you know, depending on what's ho- happening in the macro in space, there's always still investment being made. And what we've noticed is that when markets are somewhat Challenged or going sideways, hedge funds become more popular, and and we've one of our largest uh, wins this year will be a hedge fund manager, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a five billion dollar plus uh, hedge fund manager. It gives us real credibility in the hedge fund space, um, and um, I think that's going to go down as one of our nicer you know accomplishments this year. I think um, you know we continue to put a lot of money into our business, uh, referencing the, our private equity coll- our partners. And, you know, that allows us to really think about the future. And for us, I think one of the big futures that we want to continue to um, exploit is uh, is credit. We think that uh, asset managers are going to continue to express their thesis in credit markets with bank debt and other types of, uh, you know, fixed income, uh, you know, investment styles. And we're well, you know, we're well positioned, whether it's a pure play hedge fund open end strategy or a closed end strategy. Or a mixture of both, because often you'll see in the credit space that um, asset managers use both a, you know, they use a closed end structure with traded securities, but some type of, and you know, um, illiquid type of investment style yeah. that requires them to sort of keep the asset in a closed end fund. And so, you know, we're we're well positioned to do, you know, any of any of those things. Um, and uh, you know, that's so that's I think as we close twenty three. It's really preparing ourselves to take advantage of uh, hopefully, hopefully some of the uncertainty that we saw, some of the uncertainty that we saw in twenty three will sort of leave itself in twenty four. Um, maybe the Fed stops raising. Hopefully, we continue to see a Goldilocks you know economy, <laughs> not too hot, not right, too cold. Right. Uh, and we see some of the private equity managers in the middle market spaces, which is primarily where we focus. You know. Um, you know that five billion dollar, three billion dollar, four billion dollar, two billion dollar asset manager in the private equity space Frank, is really you're a doing sweet both. Spot. You're doing both LBO and credit work, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're seeing, you know, obviously we're seeing so much growth on on the credit side. I also think, you know, you have this unique advantage with the registered business, right? There's not too many admins that have. A sizable private business and registered business. There's some and the synergies and the coordination between our two businesses are you know one of the largest deals that we're doing that hopefully will close before the end of this year is a asset manager uh, that does both businesses and um, yeah. you know for, you know being able to provide 
an asset manager data across the entire spectrum of, of the way they invest, whether it, whether it be a mutual fund or a private vehicle, is very powerful, very compelling. Yeah. There are there are none other, I don't think. No, there's, there's none. none. And, and, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk a little bit maybe about some of the... And the liquid alts, the SEC, by the way, continue the to be... rules and kind of what I'll kind of call best fit. Right, kind of vendor selection, right? So, 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 um, tell me about twenty four, Frank. Uh, you know, as as you, you know, as you, you know, we all take a breather over the holiday, and then it's kind of you know back to the salt mines, right? Um, what uh, what are kind of some of the top things you're looking to accomplish, uh, you know, at Ultimus in twenty four? I'd like to see us um, do more, you know. Real estate opportunities. Uh, I'd like to see us uh, pursue, you know, a, a deep. I'd like us to do more credit, as I've referenced. Um, uh, I I want to. When you know, we're looking at improvements to um, to some of the features that we offer, um, we're one of the few administrators that does management company uh, books. Um, and we think it's a, we, we've been very fortunate that we offer this, you know, a lot of administrators who do offer a fund management company or right. are reluctant to offer it, typically do it as a, as a package. You have to do the right. administration with them. We feel that we don't need to do it that way. Uh, in fact, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of larger, you know, that bulge bracket, um, you know, um, private equity firm above 5 billion. I'm happy to do their management company. Um, I'm happy to prove my my worth and and strategic value to them um, with a management company opportunity. Uh, we think it's a great uh, way to showcase what we're capable yeah. of as an organization. Um, so, you know, doing that business and growing that business has been a, a focus of ours in 23. I think it'll be a focus of ours in 24. Um, you know, investing in um, bigger, better you know, waterfall calculation tools, uh, better, you know, better uh, technology, uh, you know, interfaces with clients for portals and things like that yeah. is a big yeah. focus of ours. Um, we've already digitized all our data. We already offer API um, access to data. So uh, continuing to build that um, part of our business is important to us because I've always tell clients that, you know, we're both looking for scale in this business. That's the main reason asset managers are seeking an outsourced provider. Not only do they want the independence feature, but they also want um, the ability to scale, uh, you know, provide scale to themselves, right? Yeah. And for us to deliver scale, we have to be scalable ourselves. So we're constantly looking at ways to introduce, um, you know, um, AI and robotics, where where it makes sense, and we're, we we do a lot of money, we spend a lot of money trying to figure out how to incorporate that into our business. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, that, you know, I think that will continue you, to be the case in twenty four. And you know, as you know, right, we're in the data science business in a big yeah. way, and it's 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 actually been fun to see kind of that making its way now. You know, data science, let's just call it into uh, the admin, um, um, you know, industry, right. Um, I um, well, the other thing I wanted to ask you, and and uh, you can be measured here, right? I get it, but but you know, I also just wanted to get a sense about just uh, you know, I would think because uh, I'm pretty plugged in that Ultimus would continue to kind of look at the right M and A in the market, right? Um, and, and and I would also I, I'd be curious uh, with your thoughts on the whole concept of lift outs. Um, you know, and not to throw you any kind of curveball here, but, but, you know, we're starting to see a lot of admins saying, listen, once, once a, 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 a transaction goes into the public domain and it's not exclusive, it's like an auction, right? Like you look at what just got paid for Standish or invest, I should say, what got invested in Standish as an example, right? So, so a lot of people are looking at lift outs as a more, uh, economic way, you know, a better economic way to create scale, but not at the price point of an acquisition, right? right. Just kind of curious if you have a view on that. So, uh, yes, one, one. I think we're still relatively early in our private equity uh, life cycle, so I don't, 
you know, I think I think we're happy. I think everyone's happy with where we are today. And I think obviously private equity is always thinking about the future. Um, and so I, I suspect there will be some kind of a transaction at some point. Um, but uh, as far as, you know, we're dynamic in our thinking. Uh, we're constantly looking for what's best for our clients and what's best for the growth of the enterprise. Um, and certainly, you know, growing the business through a lift out would be something that is, that might make sense depending on yeah. who it is and what the, you know, so we're, we're not adverse to those opportunities. We're, we're opportunistic in our, in our thinking. And the, the point here is how do we serve, how do we best serve our clients? And if there's something we're not capable of doing yet, but we can, you know, there's an efficient, elegant way of doing it through a lift down versus an M&A, we would certainly pursue that. Um, there's plenty of growth in this industry for us. Uh, and we, and, you know, looking, looking for that growth could come in a variety of ways. Yeah. And, and you know, what's, what's interesting, Frank, uh, you know, uh, I think, you know, pre COVID now, and then now that we're post COVID, um, uh, we've seen the appetite at the advisor change for lift out, right? That, that, you know, they're, they're up against the war on talent, which we'll talk on about a little bit. And some of the, you know, people that culturally were always averse to a lift out, you know, built this thing from scratch and it's staying in house. We're seeing that attitude change a little bit right, right. now and, and create some opportunities in the market. You, you talked about, I, I want to, uh, you know, finish up with a little bit about kind of, you know, let's just call it, um, uh, a few things, but, but let's just call it tailwinds and headwinds, right? So, so you, you kind of referred a little bit to the macro <clears throat> economic environment. Um, um, you know, just, uh, well, uh, you know, I know you're not an economist, but just your views on, uh, you know, as we turn the corner here into um, uh, 24, uh, I felt in your business um, and ours, I thought people were a little more measured and a little more deliberate and deferred a little bit more on lots of things because of this looming, you know, I don't want to call it recession, but this looming economic environment downturn. Just your views on that that kind of headwind. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think 23 was a year of uh, let's see what happens. You know, I've always had a view that fun admin is, um, I'll use the word countercyclical loosely, but meaning, you know, this, whether the economy is growing or, or actually when the economy is in a reverse cycle, um, that could actually help the admin business too, right? Because if you think about it, we're, you know, if you're, if you're, an, if you're an asset manager and you're running a, you know, a full scale operation that's in house, uh, you know, down markets can have fee compression, it, you know, can bring free compression problems to your business. Yeah. And, uh, the outsource option could help you, um, you know, rethink your, your business model. Right, so we can we can be a resource to an asset manager um, when 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 they are experiencing you know fee compression because there's so much competition for assets that they have to lower their management fee and their costs are going up because blah 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 you know we're 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 a valve for that and that's I think that's true whether the market is growing or, or shrinking yeah. from a macro perspective um, you know I think that um, I think that t- you know, I think the 23 was unique in the sense that we we're just coming out of COVID, really, right? Right. Um, you know, really, in my opinion, 23 is the year where everybody sort of just, you know, kind of releases goes the hounds and goes back, back to normal a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel like it took six months for people to get, you know, re- truly shake off the cobwebs. You have this, you have this hangover of, hey, is it, are we going to recession? Are we not going to recession? You know, I think the middle market space is the one that's been most impacted by by all this. I think I've seen that's the space where I see people really delaying fundraising or or struggling to raise a new capital or an emerging manager that simply can't find fresh capital. Yeah, that that space has I think been the one that's been most uh, impacted by this uncertainty. Um, I think the largest of the large managers are still finding it. You know. I, you're still seeing fund 15 or 18 being right. launched by yeah. by the by the bulge bracket, um, but that fund four or five from that four billion dollar guy might be a little more 
difficult because his, his investors still haven't kind of realized returns from previous fund you yeah. know investments. Um, so I think 24 is going to be better. Uh, I think, um, you know, not that I'm a student of uh, Fed policy, but I feel like, you know, you kind of feel like maybe there's another rate rise, but maybe we're sort of going to see how it all goes. We're, yeah, we're right. Kinda, Inflation seems right. like it's coming down. It's tame. It's around 4% drifting. Well, I think, I think you make a good point. I think a lot of people in this the second half and maybe the last eight yeah. months of 23 almost kind of regrounded their business. Right. Right. A, a bit in the market. Right. And, 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 uh, and, you know, and we, and we see that on the advisor front, the service provider front and the allocator front, really. Right. How about we talk briefly. But you know where I think the challenges are? I think the challenges are, you know, we've talked about private equity being in this business, you know, um, the challenge to me is, the quality of management, the quality of management at all of these administrators, because um, to me, that's where the work gets done over the next couple of years is really making sure that you're running your business well, that you're taking on good business that makes sense for your firm and it's and what it does well, um, and that you're managing both your own resources and and your client uh, and your client's growth. Uh, I think that's really where that's really what distinguishes good from great in the admin in the admin space and that's really a big focus of mine and and the management team at Ultimus Lever Point is really being we're really tight as a as a management team we're really focused on managing our business and making sure that our clients feel they're always getting an excellent service because yeah. you know our space is you know you know our that's our that is our that is our selling point it's about, it's fun complexity with you know, being able to handle phone complexity with folks who really know, pick up the phone, <laughs> you know, who can deliver a first class product. Yeah. Um, if we lose that, we lose we, we lose a lot. And, and that's you know, really and, the focus and the, of the, the hard part, Frank, right, is is, you know, you have to be able to articulate that and differentiate yourself to the advisor. Right. Because the advisor has a lot of choices. Right. And, and um, you know, that gets me into a little bit. Just, um, you know, I think about this SEC agenda this year, right? One of the yeah. biggest we ever saw, right? Um, 53 rules and, and, and up for discussion. But the one we've really have talked a lot with clients about and see a lot of discussion on, and, and I'd love to talk about any you want, but I'll just kind of call it the vendor rule, right? And, and the, what rule? the vendor rule, right? Yeah. Yeah, where, it's where you have to document right? Uh, some of your selection process in terms of your service providers, right? And it, what it starts to show me, at least in a very crowded space like fund admin is what really a best fit is, right? Are people doing the kind of business you do? Are, are you servicing a fund that looks like that client you're about to bring in, right? And, and uh, um, so I think if people are smart about how they brand and how they differentiate and how they articulate kind of their value proposition to an advisor. You can take advantage of some of this regulation that's kind of helping define for an advisor what kind of decisions they, they need to make, right? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think the SEC and its rulemaking capacity, or at least in this, look, the rulemaking capacity is the first step. I think the, the real test comes when there's a a real dislocation that can be traced back to a vendor just decision, you know, an asset manager who has a real issue. That's when the SEC sort of really defines uh, some of these rules, right? Right now, the rule is you have to do, you have to have a process. The process doesn't get tested until there's a, there's an ep episode. <laughs> right. That's right. right. That's right. And then yeah. everybody goes back and says, well, what was the process? And well, you know, right. So, I, look, I, I welcome those things because I think that we spend a lot of time as an organization, uh, you know, ensuring that we have clear, clear law, you know, clear rules of the road, that there's a real checklist process for our, our fund accountants, that there's a real, you know, documented policy for doing the work that we, we deliver to our, our clients. Uh, and, um, you know, we believe that RFIs and RFPs are, are a useful 
part of that process of defining yourself in real terms and you know putting on paper what it is I do and what it is I uh, you know what it is or you defining for me what you need and me telling you back uh in very in a very bespoke way in a very sort of structured way yeah what it is that we do and meeting that uh so i i you know i think formalizing that uh is something that will only help the industry because you know um it, it you know it, it'll def it'll help define administrators better yeah i mean listen i've been very impressed with what you know i know gary tankman a long time and and you i've been very impressed with what ultimus has been able to do in terms of getting on the big stage quickly, right? Like, you know, when you, to me, that big stage in fund admin is, you know, the top, the top 50, maybe even the top 25, right? Because you clearly have the 80, 20 rule in terms of where the business is, where the new business goes, right? And, and, and I've been very impressed with the trajectory which you talked about at the very beginning being, being, Pretty, pretty quick. I mean, the acceleration yeah. of, 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 of Ultimus as a powerhouse in the marketplace has been pretty, you know, pretty quick over the last couple of years. So I appreciate um, that. And I agree yeah. with you. And I think it's in large part to the management team and to, uh, you know, we've been, uh, we're all hands on deck. We're a pretty flat organization. Um, and uh, we all come from large institutional places. Right. So our, our network is pretty rich. Um, and, uh, that's been big help in, well, you know, I've always told, like, I, I speak at, uh, my alma mater's business school pretty regularly and they're filled with, you, you know, entrepreneurs and lots of 20 and 21 year olds. And, you know, what, what I always say is you can you go to that big company first, get that foundation and get yeah. that pedigree, then become an entrepreneur. Right. And then go I'd be remiss in not pointing out, you know, we just hired Jim Cass as president of yeah. Ultimus Lever Point. You know, I, I referenced Gary. Gary and I know each other from our city days, but it's really, you know, it's really Jim who's now come in in the last six months. Uh, SEI guy who ran SEI's private business and leveraging him um, is another example of, you know, the, the quality of well, you yeah, know. your ability to attract somebody like yeah, that, right? Like we've I mean, got, you know, we've got real talent coming into yeah. the industry, into our organization, and that talent is attracted to, to yeah. our growth story and yeah. our, and our, and our really what's what's ahead of us. Right. No, as you know, SEI has been a very long-standing client here. We knew Jim. We know Jim from his days at SEI very well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, listen, Frank. Anything else on your mind as we wrap up here? Anything else you want to throw out there, or? Look, I'm excited. I, I, I look in closing. We had we had a strong 2023. I think the industry is really interesting. Um, there's a lot going on from a variety of different angles. Uh, serving our clients has been, uh, you know, it's been interesting in 23, and I think it's going to be even better in 24. As uh, as you and I talked about, I think I think the economic landscape hopefully continues to remain somewhat settled, and that helps managers sort of. To, you know, keep pushing out some some product, and we're there to help. And uh, we're excited about things like I said, going into you know doing more credit, doing more real estate, doing more you know middle market stuff, um, and working with uh, great companies like yours. And uh, well, thank in, in you. I mean, you guys, listen, um, you've been a great guest. Uh, you've been a great client. I want to thank you, and I don't mean that just here, but in your days at Boney, but you've been right. you know, and uh, you know, we just. Uh, I think we just try to add value where we can in terms of your growth agenda, right? That's how we I think about that, working yeah. somebody like you. But so listen, thank you uh, for joining me. And uh, I thought it was a great conversation and, uh, you know, enjoy the holidays. And I wish you really the, the best 24, Frank. It's always a great conversation with you, George, and, and, and you too. Have a great holiday and, uh, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, sounds good, Frank. Thank you.